so I'll start now. Hi guys, uh, my name is Dami. Welcome to another um session, um sort of a career session. Um, still on internet medicine. Last um last week or last week we focused on the UK, but now we're on the US. And um, you know, without giving much away, I would like I'll let our host introduce himself. Go on. Yeah, so um, it's nice meeting everyone. My name is Benjamin Aramoselli. I'm um, the fifth of five kids. I was born and raised in Benin City, Nigeria, and um, and an alumni of the University of Ibadan. Finished in 2019, and um, soon after I came to um, Chicago to the Canada at first, actually, and then Chicago back and forth while preparing for the USMLE and also sort of doing research and um, a clinical extension at the University of Center in Chicago. And um, and then soon after I matched in internal medicine, which was some, um, I love internal medicine, it's my passion, and uh, matched um, internal medicine at Boston University. And um, I'm currently in my third year of residency and um, looking forward to what the future holds. Beautiful. And what about your timeline? Can you sort of cone in on what your timelines were and, you know, your sort of journey so far? So yeah, you, in terms of, to give yeah, in terms of, yeah. Yeah, in terms of my timeline, um, I would say like I finished in 2019, um, and then soon after I started preparing for the USMLE, um, um, and then afterwards, and then soon after I, I took most of all the steps by June 2020, 2020, no, hold on, by June 2020 exactly, I'm taking all the steps because by then I knew the COVID had hit and all, and I remember having issues going back and forth into the US and with immigration and all because of COVID and like work, research and all those things at the time. So I remember that was 2020, I think in all the steps by June, 2020. So I think within a year, because we finished our exams in July, 2019. So within, I think I took all the steps within a year. Um, step one and then step two CK. Um, I took step one up, I used about five months or six months prayer for step one. And then step two CK, I just began to prepare afterwards, which took about three to four months. And then at the time, step two CS had been canceled, so I didn't do that. So I did those during my clinical extensions. That's OET and um, what's the other thing? Um, sort of processing my license, getting the allowed provisional licenses. Um, I think I hope they are still allowed now. I think they were trying to allow them, but um, at the time, I think that year they allowed us with provisional licenses mm -hmm. from MDCN. But um, yeah, that was pretty much it. And then afterwards, I did um, I started house job. Um, <laughs> in Nigeria, um, but I didn't finish it. I came down to the US and started residency, and um, yeah, it's been a great journey all, all along. Right, so you, you did not finish house job, and you did not do NYC? No. Right, which are some of the questions, actually, because some people have asked, um, I might as well just ask them, do you think house job um, and NYC is important for those aiming for, for the US? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think it really depends on what you really want to be honest with you so let's say um for instance you had a type that felt or your son who felt like or feels that you want to gain as much in quote clinical skills you know what i mean before mm -hmm. leaving just to get your hands dirty because the truth is even with house job right in as much as the context is different from what you what we do here in the u.s or happens in the u.s um it really gets you, it gives you a degree of like the exposure with patients and like sort of ownership of patients, I think is was helpful because I did internal medicine before, I made sure I did internal medicine mm. um, in house job before leaving. So um, I think that helps sort of being in internal medicine now. So I'll say at worst, which I mean, at worst, at worst, at worst, at least for whatever specialty you're interested in, at least complete an inter your, your rotation in that mm. specialty before leaving but i think you say what well, yeah that's what what if it's something you're fine with you know what i mean yeah. go for it there's nothing bad about house job it's a great experience for a year just make sure it's somewhere that i see it plays that case for you it plays that case for your wellness just don't go anywhere where you'll be used but make sure your learning is prioritized and you gaining skills is um a priority mm -hmm. so you mentioned about um internet medicine and you like that you love internet medicine why what why exactly is why, why do you like internet medicine What's yeah, the, that's what's the background? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's very funny how, like, um, initially I think I thought I'd become a surgeon, so like, um, I, I actually came into medicine, like, having like family members who were doctors, and um, 
So from childhood experiences to maybe come to come to medicine. And then I thought I would become a surgeon because at the time I was in high school and I just read brain castings and gifted hands. So I thought I was going to become a neurosurgeon. You know what I mean, spot on. But um, mm. I read the book um, and then I got into med school and I did neurosurgery, I remember I surgery too. And this is nothing against any specialty. All specialties are important. But um, I did neurosurgery and I'm like, no, this isn't for me. Um, I knew what I really wanted. In, you know what I mean? And I, this is nothing against the specialty. I'm just speaking based on my experience. And I knew that that wasn't for me. So I thought I was to be a surgeon. And I tried um, urology. And um, these are all foolish things I did. And I'll tell you why they're all foolish things. Um, I did urology. Um, and I kind of liked it, but there are just some days, there's some reasons, kind of personal reasons I didn't want to go ahead with it. And um, I left that out. And then I thought I'd become a general surgeon. Um, Professor Rabo at UCH um, happily mentored me. And um, we did put uh, the paper together. We worked together and all. I just knew eventually the OR was in my space. You know what I mean? Based on who, knowing who I was. And um, the reason why I said those were foolish decisions were because, or is because uh, many at times we have set standards. You know what I mean? That, oh, you must be this to be this. You know what I mean? Or yeah. you, must, you know what I mean? And I was kind of fooled into that, to be honest with you, that, oh, to be called a befitting doctor, I must be like Ben Carson. You know what I mean? Those things are great. You know what I mean? Those exposures are great to so make you be, feel like, oh, I can achieve this or become this. But I feel um, really being most, of, most importantly, honest with yourself and really knowing what you want for yourself. Um, and in the midst of that, when I had done in my medicine, one medicine two, I got really real reviews on my attendings, on my consultants. And um, I need to adjust my space. Like, there was just this sort of like attitude towards critical thinking. And um, I really love reading. Like, I love reading books. You know what I mean? And um, no, I, I, you know, I don't know what you mean. I don't like reading. But um, I feel, <laughs> sorry I feel, about I feel um, but, but internal medicine, basically, you know, really sort of encompasses long term learning, long, lifelong learning. You know what I mean? It just, it just never ends. And it's just not boring learning. You know what I mean? Learning that um, beneath it is truly curiosity, you know what I mean? And I think really in terms of um, um, sort of like thinking about clinical, the core of what clinical medicine is all about, you know what I mean? I think it's, it's, yeah. it's internal medicine, you know what I mean? Um, both clinical reasoning, sort of the reasoning behind investigations, open to higher levels, you know what I mean? The reasoning behind doing a type of investigation, the sensitivity of one over the other, all those things are embodied in internal medicine. And if that's your tribe, Go for it. So it's because I know I know it's funny because in Nigeria, right? To be honest, internal medicine in Nigeria isn't like isn't really optimized. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we need like a standard working hospital system and primary care system to take good care of internal medicine patients. Those are lacking in Nigeria. Only just few hospitals have those things. Private hospitals, for the most part, I like can see we are really doing true, actual 20, 21st century clinical medicine. You know, so the thing, so because most clinical training centers, universities sort of um, have, uh, most, most universities, you know what I mean, have tertiary centers, um, which unfortunately are not as well as, as, as well staffed. So the experience people have of internal medicine isn't as great. And I think that robs people of the experience. So what I tell people, if, you, if it's something you're thinking about and you think your institutional experience for you to make a decision on internal medicine is not sufficient. I would say go to any private center around or any sort of like small standard like hospital where things really run because really for you to enjoy and see the full spectrum of what internal medicine is all about, you really need to have a functional healthcare system. Mm -hmm. It may not be perfect, but a functional hospital system, I would say not health healthcare system, hospital system that will let you see the true efficiencies that could be obtained through like you know what the true beauty of internal medicine in a way yeah so i hope you, i hope anyone can you must not come for an elective outside if you can great but um if it's something you're thinking about just find the hospital around that's something i would have done if i think sort of thinking back right now based on where i am i, I would say just find the hospital around inpatient outpatient experience and test it it's truly great if it's your if it's your vibe right because some people are just surgically oriented and that's fine lots of my <laughs> friends so just like yourself you know yeah. just, just, they just for you and that's 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 it. Yeah, you own it. Uh, I thought that's quite a comprehensive answer. And um, why why did you choose um the United States in particular for for your aim to train? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question as well. I would say 
the U.S. Um, I would say I've always had, to be honest, more or less um, a bias, like a more personal bias towards America since childhood, to be honest. Um, the American dream I've always heard about, you know what I mean? And um, truly was one of the things that chased me here, or that brought me here, or that attracted me here. Um, and aside that, I think the capacity for cutting edge research, which is one of the things I really wanted, I think I found it here as well. Like you could see a clear track for what I wanted towards like potential mentors and like the research work I want to do and like the kind of clinical medicine I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had sort of like a more defined path of what I really wanted for myself, which is why if you remember what I said in the beginning, Dami, again, back to the question of like, what do you really want for yourself? And again, being true to yourself, right? So like sort of, and, and this is me being, I'm, I, I did not in any way, you know, we, we never really know how life really sort of like directs us, you know what I mean? We can only plan and make, make um, just plan in some way, but um, um, I feel having some sort of like guidance in some way as to what I wanted helped me a little. Mm. Uh, I'm sort of so cunning on that. Do you think you're getting sort of the best training, you know, you, you can get in internet medicine as opposed to see other countries like, like Nigeria, for, for instance? No, that's a, a great question. Um, I, I really love it here. Um, I think really learning in America is very, really encourages open-mindedness and um, has really, has, has, was one of the things that drew me here as well and has, has kept me and will likely still keep me. Um, really the, the, the mindset towards learning, it's one that's sort of curiosity driven, even in clinical medicine, you know what I mean? And I think really the beauty of learning it's seen in when you are uh, when people are allowed, you know what I mean. So just wonder, you know what I mean. And sort of the the the, the format of learning, case based learning, it's been well studied. It's been well researched. It's one of the best ways of teaching and learning. But just not teaching abstract stuff, but like actual clinical cases we see on the wards, and having like strong medical educators break this thing down for you to understand each process beyond these things. I think um, sort of the whole mixture of like case-based learning and also having faculty who are just not clinicians, but who have like broad, diverse experiences in other aspects of life, including government, you know what I mean? Having an attending who is a commissioner of health or was a retired commissioner of health, having an attending who um, was the COVID response coordinator for the state of Florida, things like that, like, it just makes learning different. It's it's real because really one thing I think um, bedevils us in, in 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 clinical medicine is that um, our training I won't see our training sort of makes us think in a box sometimes you know but um, we've been allowed to sort of have that cross mixed experience of people who have experiences of other aspects of life aside medicine I think really makes the experience rich and worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it sounds all good, but uh, what are the drawbacks to to, to internet medicine training in the US? What like yeah. it's all good, and you know, really, <laughs> no, yeah, I, no, no, nothing, nothing is that, nothing is one hundred percent. Absolutely, what, what are the absolutely. Drawbacks? Um, so the first question, yeah, no, um, I think really, um, for the most part, in terms of like the diversity of experiences of internal medicine training. And I don't think it's 100% uniform because the way the healthcare system here is, different hospital systems across different states operate based on like patient populations in a way. So like they are partially like having like this patient population. This, and I mean, it obtains everywhere, but I think even more so here in my opinion. And um, so really, I think in terms of like, I mean, eventually, maybe at the end of residency, most people have like similar experiences in terms of training. And then with ACGME, like competences and guidelines, mm. that should help keep things in, sh in shape. But um, aside that, um, I mean, the work as is something we should also talk about. Um, it's very variable, I would say. At my center, we're pretty lucky. Like, I mean, for the most part, speaking personally, um, at least in terms of like wellness, I know that's a big priority and things like that. But I've had stories and seen places where really horrible time working as um, sort of obtain, you know what I mean? Having residents, I, I don't think really in this day and age, anyone should be allowed to work 
for 28 hours, for 48 hours. I think it's very unfair. You know what I mean? And um, those things still obtain here. I know like there are cost issues and all, but I feel like really if we're thinking about those who care for patients, we should be humane enough. You know what I mean? To make sure residents have really reasonable working hours. You know what I mean? To make our lives, because really residents work hard. You know what I mean? They are literally likewise of the hospitals. Most of the teaching hospitals, most community hospitals here in America and all around the world. So like, I think they deserve decent ads for their wellness, for their to, to function properly. And just for, for the sake of humanity, right? Just cause they are young doctors, they need to be used. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess you're saying like the, the, the working hours are a bit stressful. It could be a bit stressful. I mean, it's variable, you know what I mean? Yeah, in some centers, yeah. you know what I mean? In some centers, it's, I've seen some crazy things. I'm pretty lucky and I'm thankful for my, you know what, I love my program at BU. Um, we, we, we do only 12 hour shifts, you know what I mean? We don't we do night shifts and things like that. But um, no, it don't, unfortunately, it doesn't obtain everywhere across the country, which is, not, which is sad and shouldn't be so. Mm. Okay. Now, how was your March process? Just a summary. Was it, uh, what, what things did you do that sort of, that you think give you an edge um, in terms of you marching? Um, another great question, I'll say, Dami. Um, in terms of things, I would say um, research. I think like me studying research, like early in med school was helpful. Um, just sort of meeting, and it wasn't necessarily like internal medicine research, like someone like Professor Rabo, for instance, that was colorectal cancer, although that's oncology as well, but at the time, it was more general surgery. And um, it's never really a waste. Just really get your hands dirty. And um, really, why is this important? So if you look at what research is all about, and I'm not thinking about the name research, it just means to think, to be curious, and just to dig deeper, right? Um, really, for internal medicine, it's like you're know, acting like a detective for the most part, right? And I feel like that experience of having a research, you know what I mean, exposure in some way, you know what I mean? It may not be one paper, just something I think is helpful. And I think that helps me. Um, having some clinical experience, preferably an in-person clinical experience. Why in-person? Because I feel you're like coming to a new healthcare system, you know what I mean? You want to work in a new healthcare system, I think, for, for, for whatever period of time. You know what I mean? As much as possible, just try to come around and have at least an experience, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to have, make you have a feel. Because during interviews, if you ask these things, have you been here before? And, um, you know, it's a rank process. And there will be people who will do these things, you know what I mean? People are going to go for their rotations. And as much as possible, you want to put your best foot forward. So really, I know, and, and this may not be always be possible, but as much as possible, I encourage people to try to get an in-person US clinical experience as much as possible. And um, aside that, I would say um, finding a mentor is always very helpful, especially in the specialty you want to go to. Mentors, letter writers, sort of like specialty related, because really when you see some um, sort of re reviewing applications or like CVs and things like that, you tend to know those who have an interest in a specialty or not. Mm. So I know it's only easy to make up your mind saying, I want to do urology, I want to do radiology, no, right? But just have a fair sense of direction in terms of what you want to do. You know what I mean? I feel things like, um, let's say primary care medicine and family medicine, these are very reasonable because they are two similar specialties, right? So just have, and then, you know, just having that synchrony and a theme, you know, for your CV, for your application, what is my story? What am I putting forward? What would that PD remember me for when they interview me? You know, what would that quote because remember me for when I'm being ranked, right? So just having that theme, that um, sort of, you know, just that story you want to put together. You know what I mean, Dami, right? Yeah. It's just not one thing. Let that, uh, we don't want to see that single. Not, not a full so, story. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. That's really insightful. And um, just moving back out to, to the American dream. <laughs> Do you um, is is the U do you think the US is generally a good country for um immigrants like Nigerians to live in? Yeah, um that's another great question. Um America is an imperfect country. Um, but um it's a country I love. It's a country um um yet again I'm I'm being clear, imperfect, right? But um really I think um America is one very complex place. 
you know, just sort of looking at our history as a country and all of that. It's a very complex place. With a yeah, complex it's history. Our history. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my country. Um, um, you you disown the green flag. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, 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 also I'm, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I know, I know, no, no, no. I haven't. I haven't. But I'm also Nigerian. I'm a proud Nigerian also. Yeah. I own it. Um, but I think... Um, um, it's we have a very complex history. America has a very complex history, and um, having an understanding of the complexity sometimes helps in understanding why things are that way, and also helps in reshaping how we can think of solutions. Because really, no way is perfect. I mean, you know, you live in the UK. I live in the US. What is Scandinavian countries? There's no way that's perfect. No, that's perfect. That's Don't get me wrong. You know, you know what I mean? It's it's just one of the, you know what I mean, things of life. And um, I think just having a reframing of our mindset that um in as much as America has its imperfections, but anywhere has its imperfections, you know, this is a country that um I know um has given me a lot, you know what I mean? And um and so many other people. But has access to this been has, has access to this been equitable? I don't think so. You know what I mean. So that's 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 one place I would, that's one thing I would say. You know, some people have access to this, but I don't think access to opportunity in America is equitable, and that's a problem. And I think, it, it, despite me loving this country fully with my heart, I think um, just realizing that there are inequities, you know, in access to opportunity, especially among underprivileged communities, you know, black brown communities women, it's real, you know? So those are things that are there and um, it's truly a collective fight, you know, to make sure these inequities are dismantled, to make just um, for a more equitable America for everyone, you know? And um, just just having that mindset and understanding these things, I think really helps. It's a country I love, it's imperfect, no way it's perfect, um, but we'll just all keep shaping, um, you know, um, really one of the, found, the founders of this country said, um, it's an imperfect country, but um, we all have a collective responsibility to shape it towards a more perfect union. So, yeah. Uh, man, I feel like you're going to run for politics one day. Oh, me? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't uh, think so. So, so on to the interesting, um, interesting sort of vague questions that I was asked by medical students um, a while back when I put out a tweet. Um, so do you think it's advisable to do masters in the US? We we see a lot of Nigerians going to the US to do like masters in public health and all of that. In in your opinion, um looking at it from an unbiased perspective, I mean obviously some people um eventually march and get into the US, um, you know, via the US MLA and stuff, some don't. Um, some have to come back eventually, but from an outsider's point of view, do you do you think it's um advisable to um, or if you had a sibling, for instance, would you advise that sibling to come to the US to do masters in the first instance, or just you know start whatever journey you're starting from in Nigeria and just focus on that? You no, know, these, these are these are amazing questions yet again. Um, I would say the the, tr the answer to this I would say depends on what you want. You know, so um, you see, having an MPH, an MPH even in itself. It's such a heterogeneous experience across different institutions in America. So I think having a specific question as to what would this MPH do for me? You know, thinking about it as a tool just to match. I know like some people consider it, oh, you have an advanced degree, sure, tick box. So what degree would that really make you, you know what I mean, match per se? Oh, not, you know what I mean? I, I, not so much, I think, but I think it may contribute, but not as much, you know? So it depends. If you if one having an MPH, you know, is going to answer some specific questions or you want to think about a career trajectory through, like, healthcare administration, and um, that's just the time you want to use to just get an experience, you know, in public, doing a master's in public health and doing a concentration in healthcare administration, you know what I mean? Or someone thinking about being, like, a... a public health leader, you know what I mean? Then doing an MPH, sure, if that's one of the things you're thinking about in your career, go for it. Because why, yet again, what I said before, having a team and seeing a story. Because through that, you're not just coming to internal medicine, come on, internal medicine. But you know that in through doing this, I want to be a public health leader, for instance. I want to be a healthcare admin, for instance. You know what I mean? And then for that reason, I'll do an MPH. 
I'll go and let me chill or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yet again, having a specific question, you know what I mean? To make it tie along, but doing an MPH for the sake of just doing an MPH as a tick box, I don't yeah, think we need uh, this much. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I, I never really looked at it from that angle, but yeah, that, that's, that's smart actually. You know, tying it off with your story about things about like in, inequities and making a difference. Uh, that could really work. Hmm. Okay, so um, there was a recurring question about um, so for for an average medical student, uh, being defined as students that get just fifty years, between fifty and sixty, do you think the US pathway is um feasible? Because people kept asking, you know, I'm an average student, I keep getting fifties and fifties. Can I really take the steps? Can I really match into the US? What are your uh, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts? I, I obviously I'm not in the US. I can't give an objective answer. Um, but from your point of view, do you think average students in quotes can um and again this is average by their definition? I don't think anyone is average. Um and I, and I don't think exam is the best test of knowledge because it's just yeah. a yeah. you know, but then again, by their definition of the 50s, uh, can they um you know match? You know, what would you tell? these students who keeps getting 50s and 50s in their medical school about their dreams, about the American dream? Yeah, no, these are great questions. And one thing I would say is um, just realizing that the, that um, the, the, this current system in some institutions in Nigeria uses a closed system of marking, you know? that That's, you know, it's... And, and in, a, in the US here, almost no one does that. Everyone opens marks with open... We know what I mean, open marking, like... Who on earth should want to just have a score frame, you know what I mean, of students and then just grading them between 50 and 60, you know what I mean? So, and unfortunately, it still obtains, and people have transcripts that hear those things. Now, I would just want to say this, please hear me and hear me again. Please, the Nigerian testing system sometimes has deceived people into being who they are not. Just mm. be very careful. Um, this testing system, the testing systems in Nigeria really have a lot of work to be done to so become true tests, you know what I mean, of what competency should be. Most of the tests in Nigeria are just tests of cramming, for the most part. They don't test competency. And um, really, and especially when in medicine, it's medicine, testing medicine must be so competency-based because if you're going to see patients, right, and you want your way of thinking and way of reasoning to be competency-based and making sure that your assessments really, really really, reflect that. Before I get into the question, you see, it's a bad thing for two reasons. If one is doing great with such systems, you may be assessing you wrongly, and one may think you are getting a grade for the right reasons, but the competency-based testing, which I don't think, it's some, it's, they do us care up, all right, you know what I mean? Having a true holistic competency-based testing, I, I think that real lacks it. And then on that hand, those who feel just because it keeps happening, you know what I mean? Just keep people in the narrow box, 50 to 60, and they just get tired. Like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? I don't have the time for this. Well, all I keep giving myself about you coming to keep in the narrow box. So I hope it sends a strong message as advocacy towards changing the marking system to become open, to make those who work hard to feel like they work hard, and encourage those who are struggling to go and do better, knowing that their hard work will pay off. But that being said, um, for a good amount of institutions in the US, again, like mine, BU, what, what, what the PD does is for IMGs, understanding that um, the grading systems for program, for, for, for um, what's it called, uh, med schools, you know what I mean, in the US and after the US is different. Um, so long as you pass most things, it's fine. You know what I mean? Um, but um, try not to fail anything, you know what I mean? And hopefully there is, right? Just work on, it's fine. Things happen in life and that's okay. Just sit back, what happened? Work on the problem and go for it again. Mm. And that could be your story. Just own it and just um, face the reality. It's not easy. Find your tribe, find support, but never let that define you, right? It, it happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen. I don't wish anyone to get their feet to do you if you can do better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go for go for the best, but um, if that's the case, it's still possible. You know, it's still possible. Just just do your best to do above that. And um, really, yet again, and I hope the medical students advocate really strongly for open systems of marking across most institutions because it doesn't do you any good eventually. 
He does this. He does no one any good. And then you come to places abroad, they'll be like, oh, what were you doing? And then you see some places having to reach back to medical schools in Nigeria that, oh, I can go and check your scoring system because there's a problem because it doesn't tally. It's not foolishness, you know? <laughs> I don't need to get into that, but, um, you know, um, I really hope they get to think about these things a little deeper, you know what I mean? Making sure that doctors that the country put you, because these, these, are, these are real health, these are problems because these are people that will treat patients in the community I want people who are competency, competency trained, you know what I mean? Who have gone through competency-based training, you know, because it's really helpful and very important. Mm. That's a very rich answer. And hopefully, I, 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 well, in, in truth, I heard in some institutions now, they are beginning, they are beginning to open up the scoring you, system. Like yourself, like you at Abad, for instance, you know what I mean? You guys have an excellent scoring system, you know, that oh, works for everybody. Oh, we, we, we don't, we don't. Oh, really? <laughs> no, 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 ours is terrible. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm we, sorry, my bad. We, we use them. We use them. Um, uh, and our school is affiliated with um Federal Teaching Hospital in Duke City. So mm-hmm. from clinicals, everyone goes there. And the lecturers there are not primarily are primarily awarded. Oh, I see, I see, so it's so sort of see, runs. See, so from 400 upwards, it runs like a federal system. Mm. So it, mm. was, it was terrible for us. We used... Gosh. It was, yeah, it was it was bad it was bad ah, um, I can imagine. I the, I thought... the consultant body then in the hospital was very very young so they were really oh. eager to you know set devastating questions and you know really push everyone down oh. uh, but I, I i don't know if it's still the case anyway but right then where we still had the mou with fethi and we were moved over to fethi it was pretty much like a federal mm. A vindictive federal system, I must say. <laughs> so, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I hope well, things have changed. Yeah, I hope things yeah. have changed. Um, because I know that for your your story, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. I feel like you know, it's you know what I mean, very open and very modern. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. Anyhow. Um. Yeah. So let would you? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Um. So I, I got a question about a lady, a lady who started med school at twenty nine. Or oh, she's twenty nine or so. I say she's gonna finish at thirty three, and really dreams of um you know going to United States. Would you? But she sort of had this um um you know apprehension because of the age and stuff. So what what would you advise um you know people that are I'm not saying thirty and above is old, um but it's it's it, it, it's high on the young scale in quotes if that, if that makes any sense but for, so for someone who is 30 and above would you still advise them to you know grind on and, and take the steps because i mean obviously it's um, mentally um challenging and demanding and just to add on to that would you advise consultants to you know take the steps consultants who do want to work in the u.s would you advise them to in nigeria would you advise them to go through the steps again and come over and start again from IMT one. Um, see if it's a medicine for a stand. So I think those are sort of two questions. Um, the one about the elderly lady, who, not elderly, the lady who's thirty and above, who really dreams of um coming to the US but needs some guidance, and then advising consultants who don't talk in the US but may have to take the steps and um go again from IMT one. What would you? What, what's your? Uh, what's your take? Yeah. Um. So, it, so the first question in terms of um, sort of the person who's over thirty, really, age is just a number. If it's something you really want to do, and yet again, just knowing your why and um, why do I really want to do this? You know, because really, clinical training could be hard. You know, clinical training could be hard. There'll be some hard days, but really, what really grounds us and keeps us back to really enjoying what we are doing. It's always remembering our why, like, why do I want to do this? So really for that person, just know that age is a number. Even if you are 50, there are people who are 50 who go to med school, but they have a strong why at that time, maybe based on the personal experience or, it, you know what I mean, yeah. for whatever reason. So if, if, if that reason is strong enough, and you think answers your why to go into med school, go for it, you know, and um, I really hope, you know what I mean, hope you, yeah. you are successful through your journey. You know, it's hard work and all, but... Um, it's a worthwhile journey, if you ask me. Well, well, I mean, terms of, well, yeah. same, I mean, I mean that is um, um, pretty much the same thing, I would say. You know, um, they come with a very different skill set here that um, really a good amount of it just really appreciates. 
you know, because you're like a specialist, right? So you're more or less fine tuning your skills. So that diversity is actually needed here. Like if, you, if you're in a place where you're not appreciated, if you, if you feel you're going to be in a place where you're better appreciated and your skills will grow because really many other times we think about, it's good to think about, you know, I want to do this for this and but always thinking about how am I going to be, um, elevate my game? You know, how am I going to, it may not be moving here permanently, you know, for a new life or whatever. It could be, but from fellowships, you know, let's come for a fellowship for a year or two, you know, gain some skills if you don't, if you don't, if, if, you don't want to come with your whatever, you know, like those options are all there. If I consult already, you're already fully trained. You could gain like an extra skill, come for a further fellowship, you know, and um, gain like a further specialization and things. And that's, that really makes for the, the, the wealth, you know, clinical, clinical training. I've seen some people who are like, who came as attendants of different hospitals and um, from different parts of the world. And um, it's just, you know, a different skill set and really the diversity of these experiences of the person who is just a new, you know, PGY1, you know, from this system, having that person who came from, for instance, Pakistan or wherever, you know, having your, your colleagues who think, you know, it just really makes for a robust training experience and clinical experience and really highlights the beauty of clinical medicine. That's very complex. I, I'm sure a lot of people will see this and get, you know, get really good advice and even get inspired. Yeah, I'm, I'm inspired myself, honestly. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so another like, interesting question. So we've got a medical student who is in his final year, right? Um, but he's finished nursing previously before he got into medicine, um, self-sponsored, self-sponsored. And now he's getting disillusioned about medicine. His plan is to go to the US, you know, finish med school, take the steps and come to the US. Uh, but now he's trying to think of or rather, with you know the exchange rate falling, you know, and him getting disillusioned, he's wondering whether he might as well just take the NCLEX and mm. move to the US as a nurse and um, become a. Apparently, there's this CRNA, um, uh, specialist nurses or, or something. No, nurse anesthetists, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah. CRNA. Yeah. 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 So he's wondering if he should just take that pathway, do the NCLEX. Do the CRNA pathway, make a lot of money as a nurse anesthetist, and just sort of dump this med this medicine that he's in final year, as opposed to taking the steps. Uh, it's, it's kind of an odd question, but it was really yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, because I found myself, I really, I was just stuck. I could not say. I, I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what, what do you just what what, 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 what do you think? It's quite an interesting uh, scenario. Yeah. This is a hard one, I would say. But um, I, I think in terms of this one, I would say, then again, right? What do you want? You know what I mean? Because you have friends, you know, and it's, it's, and it's, it's a very tough question. It's never easy, you know? It's, it's, it's just never easy. But um, um, let me not say it's just never easy, but, you know, like sometimes it could not be easy. And um, I think just um, doing, one, doing, just doing your best, whatever this is, to really answer your question as to why you feel medicine is not for you and why you feel nursing may be a better choice for you. And then flip the coin to you as to why you think potentially medicine will be a better choice and nursing may not be a better choice. And um, really sometimes just having like, maybe we'll write them down, right? Just sit down and then write them down because this is a very like dirty scenario, you know what I mean? And like, what's really, there's really no wrong or right answer here. In my opinion, I mean, if working as a nurse makes you fulfilled, go for it. And if, if you feel like being in medicine, because I feel like it's a rich experience either way, you know what I mean? Imagine someone who was a doctor, you know, working as a nurse, you know what I mean? Or, or, or someone who was a nurse working as a doctor, it's a rich experience. So I think really weighing both sides, you know what I mean? And deciding for yourself that what do I really want for myself? So if um, that's the case and you feel like nursing is a better option, go for it. If you think medicine is a better option, go for it. And um, I would just say, um, really having like a deep introspection because really, for this person, you've had a really robust experience, really medicine, nursing. So just um, just take some time, sit down and reflect through both of your experiences, which of them are more in line with what you really want for yourself, with your goal, with your long term plans, and um, really whichever of them does that for you, I think you should go for it. So either is fine. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that answer. And I think that's the end of the interesting question. So just to come back to the routine questions before we finish, um, what, what do you think is the biggest misconception people have about medical residents in the, the United States? 
if you're just you know, staying your home. I, I, yeah, what, what do you think would be the biggest? Um, I mean, not everyone would have had the opportunities to do like clinical experience and all mm-hmm. the um, yeah, for maybe Grace and that's for me, or or the resident or something, uh, or the good doctor or whatever. But what, what, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people um people have about you know residents in the US? And maybe you know, mm. sometimes when people hear the US, you all get scared, like, oh, where are the guns and all, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, as much as I don't support guns and all of that, um, it's not as bad as, you know, some people perceive it to be. Um, I would say it's one of those. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Misconceptions. Um, maybe some people may think it's just going to be like a whole juicy, rosy experience, you know? It does it has some- ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, it has its ups and downs. Um, training could be tough sometimes, which is why really having a strong why, you know what I mean? I've said this over and over again. And I really hope um as we as we sort of kind of discuss myself, as we discuss and anyone listening to this, um just really having that strong sense of why do I really want to do this? You know, because if you if you give yourself a solid answer to that, you'll be fine. You know, so having um um so um I think having how like how do I put that better put this um people think you're just gonna you're just gonna come to the US you know what I mean and um you're just gonna you know clinical medicine just comes and oh no it has its ups and downs too you know what I mean some challenging sort of like clinical encounters some unpleasant experiences you know what I mean the concept of race and racism is real you know we mustn't deny those things it's an alien in our society that's how we must all be resolute it's not it's not one person's job we almost come together, you know, and dismantle systemic, systemic inequities that really fuels racism and systemic racism. Those things are real, but, um, but um, the ongoing fight towards sort of like defeating those is also very important and will be highlighted. And then um, I also want to highlight the importance of being done to dismantle these things. And um, aside this, um, I mean, just it's sort of like, I mean, I think those are the two big things I would say. Like, yeah, new experience. People just, yeah, those are the two big things I'll say. It's, it's still good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And um, do, do you think, um, have you ever, you know, had any regret, any regrets concerning your choice? Anything you wish you did better or anything at all concerning your, your journey and your choice so far? Um, that's a great question. Um, for me, I would say right now, I mean, yeah, things you feel like, well, I wish I'd done this better. Nothing I'll say in which I'm like biting my finger. I'm like, oh no, I wish I'd done this, done this, and all the other things. I'll be like, well, I wish I'd done this better. Maybe ask a few more questions. But um, um, I'm just doing, like really minor, minor things, you know, like in terms of let me think. Um, I mean, COVID just really, you know. And then I did my, I matched around that COVID times, so it was very, you know, very every anyhow. But now things are more back to normal. So, um, no, really, no, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good um and what what are your plans now once you're done with inter i think you're, you're in your third year you said so what are your plans once you're done with imt i think it's three years then what what next yeah um i will i'm actually going to stay back for a chief year next year at some bu and um sure, and then I'll see. you said what, I, what is, i'm going to stay back for a chief year I'm a chief, chief year okay year. yes um at bu but i'm going to stay back for a year um and um serve as a chief do some admin work work on attending and now i decide what i want to do next if i want to do like a fellowship if i want to work as a day hospitalist i've not made up my mind yet i'll decide but um that's where i am now so yeah for now still in third year looking forward to i think beginning interviews now for the next set of people coming which i'm excited about um but um yeah looking forward to chief here next and i'll decide on what i want to do uh, perfect so still, yeah, still, but I think for now, like either like hospital medicine or cardiology, one of them. Yeah, still pluripotent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not yet divided yet. How's that word committed? And <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have um? Do you have any sort of um? If you had to give a medical student just one advice now, or what would you, what would you give? Or, or actually, oh. these are two. I don't. No, you know, not just one. What uh, do you have any? You know. Open ended. Do you have any sort of advice for medical students, and what sort of little te- little steps would you say medical students can sort of take to better their chances of 
get into the US. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of advice, I would just say, um, really, just always remember that um, for how far you've come, you know, going into med school, really getting into med school anywhere in this world isn't funny, you know. Um, never forget the amount of hard work you put into that because really in medicine, it's very easy to forget how much one has worked to get to where you are and we just keep looking towards the next thing, you know. It's the way the system is, you know, the way training goes and all. But never forget to appreciate yourself or look back and appreciate yourself for the hard work you've done and um, always do that as you look forward. And then the other thing I would say is um, in the midst of that, be always kind to yourself and um, yeah, enjoy the journey. It's never, it's not, it's not always easy, but um, um, just knowing why you, having a strong why to whatever you want to do really makes things easier on the, on the harder days. And um, the other question was, um, and you asked for the advice and what was the other question you asked again, Daddy? I'm sorry, I forgot little, it. Yeah, little steps, what little steps? Yeah, 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 in terms of little steps, um, for that, I would say um, just take it easy, you know, one day at a time, you know, just one thing. Even if it's just, um, you know, over studying medical school, um, just be consistent in all you do. There's, there's one thing, it's not a professor, um, Professor Latundi Oweye um, of Anatomy and the University of Ibadan. He oh, said, before. yeah, yeah, he's, he, yeah, he's an amazing person. Um, he, he, say, he says, um, consistency is the mother of mastery. Oh, no, sorry, repetition rather. Is the mother of mastery. Someone else said this, but um, you know, he 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 made it stick in my head. And um, really, you know, looking at Keith Moore, for instance, or this anatomy book, it looks so big, right? But really, consistency is the thing. Just take it one day at a time. In a thousand days, I mean, med school for three years, that's a lot, but um, you know, <laughs> just just you know, be consistent in doing like five, ten pages, you know what I mean, every day, and yeah. just be consistent doing that. And um, I really hope that helps somebody. Um, I think that's one of the key things that really helps. Um, moving aside to medicine in life, other aspects of life, I think it's helpful. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have uh, jotted a lot of motivational quotes, oh, which, please. <laughs> <laughs> which I'll be tweeting in bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just every morning motivation, you know. Oh, but yeah, but I, I think you've, you've, done, you've done justice to you know, a lot of the questions that medical students nowadays have. Um, you know, and I think this will be very, very useful. Thank you very, very much. Well, no, no, uh, thank do you have any more? <laughs> do you have any last, no, no. any last things to say? No, 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 but I mean, thank you even more for um, you know, for even doing this because for me, I'm I'm quite an introverted person. I would, you know, I <laughs> even coming up here, you know, but I'm really thank you because this is always very helpful. Just just putting this information out. Not everyone can do it, and um, really thank you for doing this. And I really hope um. I believe this should be helpful, right? And um, if you have more questions, just reach out to him and then um, we could let me know if there's anything that's, anything that's pertinent that I could help with based on um, all, all, all we talked about. But really, this is a great avenue and I'm um, really thank you for doing this, Damien. You just to quote the good one. The popular quotes uh, we say, um, you know, info, Leo, info. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, what, <laughs> what that means is if it's information that makes someone fly. So, <laughs> um, I I, th I think back in the day, um, there was um, um, information was a bit hard to access. I think. Maybe That's not hard, true. but I think there was that um, access. Yeah, no, it was hard to access. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it was hard access was yeah. If, even till now, right, there are parts of the world where there's still lack of access to just basic inform life life saving information. Uh, that's unfair, you know. But um, this helps to dismantle those, you know, those um barriers and all and de democratize. This effort, this effort, like making sure information gets to people, you know, easily with easy access. Um, let me just, yeah, one more thing. Please like yeah. and subscribe. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be with you. What am I saying? We'll go more, <laughs> more, more videos as as um, the channel goes along. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, bless. My pleasure.